Robocraft gets creepy, crawly, and awesome with brand new legs. DFO delays closed beta until 2015. Bandai Namco shows off its new free-to-play title. And what is RuneScape doing in Hearthstone? What's happening guys, James Blonde here with MMOWatch.com with a quick weekly recap for MMO news and announcements of the week ending October 13th, 2014. And a newly released patch for Ghost Recon Phantoms comes in as our first piece of news this past week. Update 1.2.4 for Phantoms brings in some semi-major changes primarily based on community feedback. The first of which addresses the community concerns for the AK200 series which had very low control values and a small magazine size. So now with the changes made, these weapons and a few others like them are more competitive with the latest tier. Other updates along these lines included the addition of private matches. Now players are able to play with others regardless of clan in any map. Kinda surprised that wasn't already an option. Tactical suit camo customization is another big addition to this update. Like weapon camo, you can now customize the camo pattern of your tactical suit, starting with 10 familiar camos. Plus, with the updated kill screen part of this patch, you can now see the setup and outfit of the enemy that killed you, or vice versa when you kill an enemy. This lets you show off your new tactical camo pattern in close detail, or gives you the opportunity to, you know, see what killed you. Either way, plenty of other changes have been made in this patch to go along with these, so head over to the MMO website post to pick up on all the details. Next up, a badass major update was added to Robocraft this past week, introducing walker legs, nano disruptors, and boss battles. As you can see from the video playing here in the background, the walker legs are pretty much awesome. I mean, they are well done physics-wise, and they are just plain epic. The legs can climb, crouch, let you hang upside down, and jump. Plus, when jumping from the side of a cliff face, the legs will naturally aim to self-right during the fall, just like a cat, so you always land on your feet. Talk about an awesome way to hide and prey on enemies. These new movement cube types are available for tier 7 and 10 robots. The new nano disruptor weapons will allow you to deal damage to enemies but at the same time heal allies, so that's cool. And the boss battles are even cooler. Starting at tier 7, players will have access to the new boss battle game mode, and this allows players to play as the boss and take on a team of players or be part of a team that takes down the boss. But the absolute coolest part of this patch by far is the removal of the unpopular repair mechanic in the game. So now everyone has free repairs forever, so it's now impossible to get a net loss in battle. It's a pretty epic update for Robocraft if you ask me. On a slightly similar note, Brickforce developers Infernum sent out an email recently teasing its players about a new Clan Wars update coming soon. According to the email, the new Clan Wars will have improved matchmaking and completely new clan rewards. They plan to run on two-week cycles with clan rankings, and a new clan point system will offer a fresh start during each ranking cycle, giving everyone an equal opportunity to compete. Still not exactly sure when this clan wars overhaul is actually happening, but can't be too long from now if they're already sending emails to players. Up next, Grinding Gear Games has been hard at work tweaking the new Hall of Grandmasters in Path of Exile. This past week they released a quick video that you see playing here showcasing a fight in the halls with a Grandmaster that was submitted by a player who purchased the Grandmaster support pack. These players are allowed to immortalize one of their characters into the Hall of Grandmaster. Now it does require you to purchase the supporter pack in order to do this, and this new video here showcases the development progress, and the cool part is the Grandmaster already behaves a lot like a real player, so they definitely have that part down. This new area should be pretty challenging once implemented into the game fully, especially when players have to face more than one Grandmaster. I can't even imagine. Recent news came in this past week for the relaunch of Dungeon Fighter Online that we learned about several months back, and the recent news is, is that the closed beta test has actually been delayed. As posted on the official Facebook page by the CEO of Neopole, the team is facing some delays as the staff is preparing to move to a new office. Hopefully that's good. And they're working to update the game so that way it isn't as dated. I guess they're going to add some cool new things to Dungeon Fighter Online, much less relaunch it. And that sounds okay to me, so now instead the closed beta is expected to start in March of 2015. Still a little ways off. But speaking of Dungeon Fighters, Webzen celebrates its continent of the Ninth Seal community with a nicely designed infographic style video. According to their official site post, they've promised to deliver this video for some time now, but now it's here, showcasing some major milestones, basic statistics, and just some plain fun facts about the player's choices and actions in the game. It's crazy, apparently C9 actionists make 110,000 items every day. That's a lot of crafting. Either way, it's cool that they went out of their way on making a creative and detailed video like this for the community. 
Cool news for RuneScape fans, Jagex announced this past week the development of a brand new game set in the RuneScape universe called Chronicle RuneScape Legends as a working title. This game is interesting in terms of its genre. It's considered a collectible card game and according to the official post, it's a game that focuses on quest building, allowing players to craft their own miniature RPGs against enemies, including classic RuneScape boss monsters before entering into intense PvP combat. They've already got an official site live for the game, and it looks like you use Hearthstone-looking cards in order to create a role-playing situation that plays out both for and against the odds of the players. Could be interesting, but it'll be a while. The game is set to launch sometime in 2015 on PC, Mac, tablet, and other mobile platforms. Go, go, RuneScape Hearthstone. Next up, Perfect World Entertainment announced the release date for Swordsman Online's first major expansion called Gilded Wasteland, along with releasing a new preview trailer you see playing here. Gilded Wasteland throws players into the arid regions of Pinglang, Tung Hong, and the Shadow Mountain Plains. Hopefully I pronounced all of that stuff correctly. I doubt it. Challenging them to battle through new instances and dungeons. Additionally, this expansion increases the level cap from 89 to 94 while also improving the leveling curve. The new expansion for Swordsman is set to release on October 23rd, and there is plenty more information to be found at the site post at MMOHunts.com. The latest Trove Talk was also released this past week, talking about the first week in closed beta and how everything is going to stay, so apparently no more world wipes, which is good. They also give us an overview on the new Neon Ninja class in their home biome, Neon City, and a new style system that allows players to save the way their gear looks and use that to overlay onto their existing gear to look exactly how they want in-game. The new Neon Ninja class has some cool abilities to offer players. One, of course, is a stealth that allows the ninja to cloak and flip backwards to engage in combat from a safer distance, plus allowing him to throw ninja stars after building up a few charges. It's cool new stuff for Trove. Unfortunately, the news isn't about how soon we'll have keys for you guys at mmohunts.com slash giveaways. Still waiting on trying for that one. I guess their PR is a little too busy with Arcage stuff for now. That's just what we're gonna say. Next up, War Thunder just released update 1.43 this past week, along with a new video summarizing all the changes made. Apparently this is one that players have been looking forward to for a long while now, and with this update, you're now able to easily make equipment sets for both air and ground battles. A lot of changes made to the ground portion of War Thunder in this one. Plus, you can now study your tanks and learn where your weak spots are and do just the same for enemy tanks, making you more familiar with how to be an effective tank killing machine in battle. With this, they've also added detailed visuals regarding damage received by destroyed tanks so you're able to see the destruction you caused inside and out. Looks pretty cool, honestly. We've seen this in the past. And these are just scratching the surface on what's new in this update, so head over to the site posted at to check out the latest War Thunder update preview video. Quick news from Armored Warfare as well, at the Video Game Expo in Moscow this past week, they decided to run over a car with a BTR-80, which is this crazy looking armored vehicle here. Why, you ask? Well, why not? Because reasons. Pretty soon it's going to be an epic battle between these war games on who can impress people more with crazy stunts like this. Oh, you ran over a car? Okay, I'll play your game now. And speaking of, it looks like there might be a new contender in this genre. Sorta. Last week, Battleline Steel Warfare was announced as a new free-to-play game from Bandai Namco Games, but this one has a little bit of a twist to the gameplay opposed to the other tank battle games. This game is named for its main mode, where teams push a visible battle line back and forth as they try to take objectives and maneuver on the battlefield. So, this game is just as much RTS as it is shooter. It's got an interesting setup from the looks of it, and it doesn't look like we have to wait that long before we actually get to play the game. Closed beta starts up in early November, and the game is expected to launch before the end of the year. That was fast. And lastly, if you're already in the mood for Halloween this year, Osiris is the lucky god in Smite to be blessed with not one, but two right. Halloween-themed skins. One based on Frankenstein, and the other as Osiris the Reanimated. They did a pretty good job with these skins. The only crazy part slash perhaps drawback is right. that it seems like they're only available via chests chest exclusive. Let's hope they're not that rare. Anyway guys, that's about all the major MMO news and announcements for this week. Like always, if you're looking for more information on the topics featured in the recap, check the links in the description below. Otherwise, head over to MMOS.com news for even more MMO news. Feel free to discuss the news in the comments below or head over to MMOS.com forums. But until next time guys, that's going to be it for me. I'm James Blonde. See you out there gamers.